As we absorb alcohol into our bloodstream, it affects both our organs and our state of mind. It raises our blood pressure and makes our heartbeat irregular. We relax, lose our inhibitions, and our coordination. These symptoms are a consequence of chemical reactions in the brain, especially in this region, the cerebellum. It controls coordination and balance. When we drink, alcohol affects the cerebellum's brain cells. Some synapses accept the signal more frequently. Others become totally blocked. The more we drink, the more extreme the effect. It may feel good now, but there'll be a price to pay later. Time passes, and we get to know our limits. Now, new challenges are on the horizon. To find love, and have children of our own. Our late twenties. Childhood is a distant memory, but not the thrill of our first kiss. That was pure lust. Now it's time for something new. It's time to fall in love. Many of us meet our future partners at work. We may think the attraction is social or physical, but a lot of it is biological. We use our eyes to size up our date. But looks aren't everything. Attraction is also about smell. Inside the nose, olfactory nerves do more than detect smells. They also detect chemicals we can't smell, pheromones, odorless hormonal messages we release in our sweat. Pheromones carry information about our genetic health and our ability to resist disease. Our brains use these signals to help choose a partner with the best possible genes for our children. Love is more than just an emotion. It's all about chemistry. We release adrenaline into the blood. Our heart pounds. We can't sleep. When that happens, another hormone comes into play. The brain floods with dopamine the feel-good hormone. It's as potent as cocaine, makes us euphoric, and it's addictive. It leaves us wanting more. We start thinking about commitment and eventually marriage. Love, both chemical and emotional, wins the day. It's a relationship we hope will last a lifetime, and the process of long-term bonding is chemical. <laughs> 
sex isn't just about procreation or recreation. It chemically strengthens the bond between us. Both partners' pituitary glands pump the blood full of a substance called oxytocin, sometimes called the bonding hormone. It's the very same hormone that binds us to our mothers as newborns. Some anthropologists believe oxytocin could be evolution's way of creating a bond that's strong enough to endure the trials of parenthood. And the time for parenthood is now. The man releases sperm. The goal, to find the egg. An egg ripens and bursts from the woman's ovary, the largest cell in the human body. It passes into the fallopian tube, ready for fertilization. Sperm are the smallest cells in the human body, and they have a tough journey ahead of them. First, they have to survive the hostile environment of the vagina. Its secretions are acidic to prevent bacterial infection, but they also kill sperm. Ejaculation releases 300 million sperm, but only thousands will make it as far as the cervix. The surviving sperm swim into the uterus and fallopian tube. Muscular contractions in the walls of the fallopian tube help guide the sperm toward the egg. Only a few hundred make it this far. And only one will succeed in fertilizing the egg. This truly is survival of the fittest. Ten hours later, the strongest of 300 million sperm is the one to pass on its genes. So far, there's no sign of conception. We're totally unaware that we're about to embark on a new chapter in our lives. Over the next 40 weeks, a single cell will develop into a perfectly formed baby. Often, the first symptom is morning sickness. No one knows for sure what causes the nausea. One theory is that it protects the fetus from toxins in food, which could harm its organs during this critical phase of development. Another theory is that nausea is a side effect of the mother's immune system as it weakens to avoid attacking the developing embryo. The fetus is effectively a parasite. It saps the mother's energy as it draws what it needs from her body. It has its own life support system, the placenta. Here, the mother's blood passes nutrients across a membrane into the fetal blood.